and welcome back to Share Truth Apply Scripture. I'm Jordan Shambly, joined as always by Cedra Sarton. I'm here. I said as always, but that's not necessarily true. I know. Sometimes, sometimes it's not as they, always. Sometimes they boot me out whenever we have a guest. So, But today we told Wesley, no, nah, not this time. Not this time. Not this time. <laughs> no, well, I have been, people can probably tell, I've been battling a little bit of a mm-hmm. issue with my voice, sinus issues. My voice is coming back, but... Thankfully. We're not 100% there yet. Yeah. So if you're wondering, who is this new person with the smoky the <laughs> voice? <laughs> you know, it, it's, yeah, it's just me. It's right. just me with sinus issues. <laughs> yes, but you're getting better, so that's yeah. great. Um, but also in studio with us, we have Laura Story again. Yes. Welcome. I'm so glad to be here. Hey, and I think you sound awesome. Thank you It's very, very mysterious. It's kind of like a <laughs> cool, mysterious <laughs> voice. No, it's okay. Maybe my voice will come back and I'll go back. I kind of... I don't sound as cool in real life most of the time. So, <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, Laura's story, singer, songwriter, Bible teacher, book writer, you're all over the place. Um, but we're so happy to have you back. Uh, I really enjoyed the last interview. Actually, I went back this morning and listened to it. Just oh, to, no way. Yeah, and so I, I, um, I was really looking forward to this one. You've written a new book. I have, yes. It's called So Long Normal. So long, normal. Yes. That doesn't sound fun to me. I know. <laughs> and that's really what the book is about, is so many of us look at change mm-hmm. and leaving the familiar and leaving the comfortable with this, like, ah, uh, this pit in our stomach of, oh, uh, do I really have to embrace change? Or, mm-hmm. you know, immediately when something changes in life, our, our blood pressure skyrockets mm-hmm. and our palms get clammy. But the truth is, uh, is that life, life involves change Mm -hmm. and we can either face it with fear or we can face it with faith yeah wow i think this is something that's going to resonate with most of the world right now i think because we've just gone through a quote-unquote pandemic which for most of for some of us you know it didn't change just a lot but Mm -hmm. for a lot of people it changed their entire lives right and people have lost their jobs you know people have been you know stuck inside not being able to go out and uh we've been very very fortunate Mm -hmm. here at the american family association to be able to continue working and um, we we did have to make some changes some yeah. of us work from home a little bit right. um, but but we were able to continue doing what we're doing but not everybody was so fortunate yeah so. absolutely and that's why I think this book is very timely because there are a lot of people who are still facing that kind of despair of last year you yes. know where everything was just sort of um, uprooted I guess so this was written during 2020 it was partly because of my normal being mm. you know kind of have turned upside down with an entire touring schedule just right. canceled for yeah. over a year. So I'm sitting there thinking, okay, God, what, first of all, what do I do with this time? And believing, like if if we truly are a people of faith mm. that believe that God is in control of all things, then mm. <laughs> inevitably God has something different for me during right. that season. And as I reflected on that and really reflected on my own uh, tendency to cling to my plans, mm. Mm-hmm. as uh, the things that give me stability in life. And realizing, even though, I mean, I would say I'm a person of faith, my hope rests in God, yeah. you know, firmly, but practically, what does that look like? Right. And that, I think for all of us during COVID, that was challenged and we began to see how much we really did cling to those plans mm-hmm. and to the normal patterns of life. Because right. you, you don't really know it, you don't really know how much you cling to it until those things are all right. upended. Yeah. And for the Christian, um, it may have been a blessing in disguise um mm-hmm. now that now that i think about it because it did reveal those idols that we had yes. those idols of comfort and you know falling back on the plans that we thought were best for ourselves and it drove us many of us hopefully to go back to god and say okay falling back on you absolutely and and, and you are the foundation you you're the one who's driving my life and not pretending to have that power ourselves i think it was a blessing to have that taken away from us absolutely and and it's it's <laughs> interesting that, that you even bring that up because like we would we would not say that God is the author of evil he right. clearly is not um, any pandemic any um, uh, any evidence of creation being marred mm. that we can trace that back to the garden we mm. can trace it back to the fall but we what we do believe even though God's not the author of evil we believe that he sovereignly 
allows things, that he sovereignly controls things. And I don't even fully, even yeah. as I say that, I don't even <laughs> understand what, what that means. That's a whole and, other series. And that's of a interviews. whole other series <laughs> that you're going to get someone way smarter to come in and talk about. Uh, but the thing that I kept coming back to in the midst of the pandemic, uh, there was there's a passage in Hebrews. Mm. And Hebrews often can be referred to as the book of better things. And it talks about how Jesus is better than the angels. Jesus is better mm. than what the prophets knew, than uh, all of this. And then it gets to this part, I think it's in Hebrews 12, and he talks about this shaking. Uh, and he talks about how God allows what can be shaken, mm-hmm. that he might reveal that which cannot be shaken. Wow. Yeah. So you think about, uh, it, it shows you his motive mm-hmm. in allowing turmoil in our lives. It's not that he is unkind or this malicious God that, that loves just to shake things because he mm-hmm. can. He says, no, I want my people to be grounded and holding to that which cannot be shaken. Mm. So you see it kind of as an act of mercy. Right. When he allows things in our lives that that shake us, honestly. It, it's uh, it's like, yeah. uh, so mama, do I have time for a story? Absolutely. I don't know how long, you've know how long your, your podcast is. Uh, but when my husband and I first moved into our house, uh, we, we had bought a foreclosure. So the mm. bank owned it. They weren't going to fix anything. They just said, you can take it or leave it. Absolutely. We said, we'll take it for like, <laughs> you know, 60% of the market value. Sure, we yeah. got it. Um, that, that's good. <laughs> mm-hmm. So in the midst of that, uh, we so we got this house. Mm. One of the things that they said, they said, the back deck is not stable. Oh, Do not get on the back deck. It's missing support beams. It is not stable. First thing you need to do when you move in is just like level it. Yeah. So we we scheduled someone to come and, and take the whole thing down, but it was probably going to take a, f- a few weeks. And I remember looking at that deck, thinking, you know, it really doesn't look that unsturdy. And my, <laughs> <laughs> I was oh. telling my husband, I said, hey, well, what if we just tried? What if we just like threw a couple of lawn chairs out? Because it was sure. really nice looking back deck, <laughs> in which my husband clearly did not allow me to do it. But I've mm. always kind of kept that picture of. Uh, you know, kind of the demolition of that back deck. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't because it didn't mm. look good, or it was because it wasn't sturdy. Mm-hmm. And I think about the character of God who loves us too much mm. to allow us to yes. lean on foundations in life that aren't sturdy. Yes. Sometimes He does allow that shaking just to to pry our hands mm-hmm. from stuff that even really good things, but prior hands from things that we look to for security when we mm. truly should be looking to him alone. There, there's so many things in there to unpack. Um, you're, you're hitting on why does God allow us to pass through trials? Absolutely. That's essentially what you're talking about. There's a, um, there's a hymn. Um, uh, I cannot remember the, the, the title of the hymn, but one of the, one of the verses is, uh, when through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, mm-hmm. my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. Um, the flame shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. Amen to that. And I love the old hymns. Abso- You're speaking absolutely, my language. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but that, that is why God allows us to pass through those fiery trials. It's because he loves us. He's going to burn away the dross. And that's that can be and is often a painful process. Absolutely. Um, if we're not if we're not living lives with open hands. Um, I, I have a I have a good friend who um, one beautiful girl, mm. godly girl. She did not get married until she was 42. Mm. OK, mm-hmm. so for 20 years, she's asking that question like this. Am I not good enough? Am I not smart enough? You know, I'm not pretty enough. All of these these things. And God just had her. He had her in a season of waiting. But the neatest thing now is to see, you know, God, for some for some people who are in seasons of single singleness, singleness is the gift that God has chosen for them for a lifetime. And for her, God decided to to allow her to marry at 42. But the neat thing about her relationship with her husband Judson now is that she's not looking mm-hmm. to Judson to be her savior because yeah. she had 20 years mm-hmm. with just her and Jesus yeah. for her to know my joy comes from him. Mm. And it, it was neat to see that those 20 years of singleness really was God's preparation right. to give her 
a marriage that really would be more satisfying and more successful mm-hmm. because of the lessons she learned in those 20 years of singleness. Yeah. Wow. That, I mean, that's powerful because, uh, okay, so the title, the title of your book is So Long Normal. Um, it's interesting the word you chose there is normal. <laughs> um, because that's how we feel definitely yeah. about how we the, our vision for our own lives yeah. and how we think sh- things should unfold it just yeah. seems logical to yeah. us it's like, I, I mean I keep hearing the phrase when is thing, when are things going to get back to normal <laughs> I know everywhere and in fact I just thinking I'm going to put that on t-shirt and just yeah. start selling it <laughs> and, and, yeah. and stuff like well you know and then there's this is the new normal mm. yep. that I keep hearing as well well, That's, people people are asking when are things going to get back to normal? Because kind of the the underlying current there is I need normal in mm. order to be okay. Yeah, I need normal in order to feel stable. Mm. And it's not wrong for like we're all we're created that way. Mm. We're created to need stability and security. The question is where do we find that stability and security? Right. And the truth is, is through COVID, through Whatever, I mean, because it doesn't have to be COVID. It could be a health issue. It could be a relational issue, a job loss. There are things that God can teach us mm-hmm. during those seasons uh, where our security and our stability begin to be firmly grounded on the person of Jesus mm-hmm. on, and on the promises of God so that when we hit the next, you know, God forbid, <laughs> the next COVID, the next yeah. disma- <laughs> earth dismantling trial, yes. Uh, that we won't be shaken quite as much mm-hmm. because we've we've learned the value of planting our feet on something that truly is sturdy. Right. Wow. It really does. Um, that kind of thing, we were talking about how common it is to hear, go back to normal or this is the new normal. Um, it, it's revealing sort of the heart cry of even even the lost world. Um, you, everyone wants that security. I mean that's that's built into us. That's designed into us. Yeah. So that th- this is this is an opportunity for Christians. Um, one to answer that need and to and to point them to Christ, but also to live lives as an example. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I I think about uh, <laughs> the passage that I've always laughed at. Mm. For so many years, it's Proverbs 31, because it talks about this <laughs> yeah. amazing woman who makes all her own clothes and all this stuff. <laughs> right. But what, one of the verses I've always, mm. that I've always loved and wanted to emulate is it talks about this woman laughing at the days to come. Because mm. when I think about how I respond towards the days to come, I would say there's some there's some hand wringing. Mm. <laughs> there's there's yeah. some sleepless nights. There's all of that. But what would it look like uh, for for a watching world mm-hmm. to begin to know the trustworthiness of my God based on my ability to laugh at the days to come? Because mm-hmm. that really is that's the greatest witness yeah. that you could ever. The, honestly, the and I don't say this to heap guilt on anyone, sure. but one of the the poorest witnesses that we as believers can have is when. The world looks at how we respond to a pandemic or how we respond to enormous change. And if they were to see us respond the exact same Mm -hmm. way as people that don't know God. Absolutely. Because really it it tells people um, that A, that faith really isn't relevant to real life. (laughs) And B, that even though we talk about, you know, how great is our God, apparently we don't even believe him to be big enough to handle something like COVID. Right. Yeah. And I love it, on this show, I love to bring things back to a an eternal perspective. And uh, the thing is, we know we know you know the end of the story. We know um, what our security is founded on, and we have all these great claims, right? We ha- we claim, like like you said, how great is our God, and he's he's the creator of everything. He's control of everything. There's no reason for us to fear. We're his children. I mean, what what a mm-hmm. crazy thing to say to the world. And then when something like this happens. Oh wait! Why, why aren't you say you're the children of God? You say that you're you you serve this great and mighty King. Why don't you live like it? You know? Yeah, because I I want a life that says I trust you. Period. Mm-hmm. Rather than I trust you when I agree with your plan, right? Or I trust you when I can. Like I don't even have to agree with it. I just want to see it. <laughs> if you could just show me the blueprint. If you right, could just yeah. like if you can mm. 
uh, if I can pencil it in in my right. in my Outlook calendar. That, yeah. I was going to say day timer. <laughs> that shows how old I am. My dad had a day timer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks a lot, buddy. Uh, no, but if I can just plan it out mm-hmm. a little bit, rather than God, I trust you whenever, whatever. Right. And you you brought up the we we really want to see that blueprint. Um, I do think. It is really amazing, and, and, and the Christian has this, um, uh, and, and no one else does, okay? Yeah. So, like, no other religion claims to have this really. Um, we kind of do have a blueprint. Yes. You know, so a lot of a lot of times I'll, I'll hear even Christians talk about, you know, like, faith as if it's like, okay, you're flinging yourself off a cliff and being Absolutely like, save not. me, God, I, I trust that you're going to yeah. do this. And sometimes it is like that because of our lack of understanding, or um, and that's definitely a great attitude to have, and we mm-hmm. should we should feel that way. But the thing is, we're never throwing ourselves off a cliff because we have the Word of God. Absolutely, and we we know we have the Word of God, and mm-hmm. we ultimately know the ending, mm-hmm. and we even know a little bit about the process. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more we don't know we don't always know where we're going, but we know the character of God well right. enough mm-hmm. to know that we can trust as He yes. leads us. I think about Abraham, who you know he's called to leave everything to go to a land that I will show you. Mm-hmm. And, he, and like I, I would have responded, cool, could you just go ahead and show me now <laughs> before we leave? Because right. I, I just need to yeah. know what to pack. Just give, I me, need a, to... just give me a little dream. Or yeah. If I could just yeah. be able to, you know, enter in the address wow. in my uh, in my Google Google Maps app. Yeah. But, you know, I just want to <laughs> know a little bit more details. Uh, mm-hmm. But God's saying, no, 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 my trustworthiness mm-hmm. is enough. Yeah. And if we believe God, like Paul says in Ephesians, if we believe him to do exceedingly more than we can think or ask, he can't even share with us Mm. how great it will be because we can't even conceive of Mm. it. Wow. I love that you brought up Abraham um, because one of the interesting things about Abraham, so he was promised this land. He was promised this inheritance. And he he did see it. I, I, he 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 went to the promised yeah. land and he roamed around. He never settled down. Hmm. Um, he he was always wandering, and his and his family was kind of always wandering. Um, so the 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 full realization of that promise was not um, in the in the physical sense of the land was not given to him all the way. Yeah. But at the same time, you look at you look at where he came from. He was a pagan. Mm-hmm. He, he he. There was no reason, obviously. For God to pick him, but God chose him and and gave him this promise. But he was a pagan. He came from a, a wealthy family, um, and he left all this wealth for a promise that he never really one hundred percent fully realized yeah. in his lifetime. But he had God. Yes. Throughout this whole thing, and I think that's the key here is that God is that great inheritance. Yeah. And God is that great fulfillment of the promise, mm-hmm. even though our lives might never realize a normal. Yes. You know, even though we might not achieve the things that we would like to, we need to understand daily that despite that, we do have God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and so often, you know, you think of it, so transition mm-hmm. is a time of anxiety. Mm-hmm. And then when the transition is resolved, you know, you look for the job and then you find the job. You right are sick with something and then you get better, that that's like the season of joy and peace. Mm. But it's not necessarily what the Bible teaches because right. you have a guy like Abraham mm. or Moses or really anyone, anyone you see yeah. that these people have long seasons of transition. Mm. And I don't even know if you can call it transition if it's like it, like yeah. they never land. Yeah, uh, it's just their life. <laughs> it's just their lives. You know, it's 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Right. And you think, God, I want you to be bigger to mm. me. I want you to be, for your presence to be so felt in my life that I have the same peace that I would in resolution, that I would feel that same peace in the transition. Yeah. And because I don't want, uh, when when you need the resolution of trials in order to have peace, you're really giving the trials all the power. Right. You're giving them all the power to control basically your daily countenance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for me, it's like how I respond to my kids, yeah. what, what my kids see. I think mm-hmm. about specifically with COVID, um, will they see, like when they think back to COVID, will they see it as a time that mom was just like super anxious watching the news all the time, constantly mm-hmm. frustrated that yeah. my plans were being changed? Or would they see it as a time that I truly did have peace and joy because I trusted in God even when I didn't understand what was going on. Right. And that's the that's the kind of God that we have. 
uh, we just need to let our hearts rest in him rather than our circumstances. Right, right. Well, I think because my resting heart rate is much higher than others, I think, because my, <laughs> I, my I'm, I live in this realm of anxiety. That yeah. This has been like just a, the biggest struggle, I think, for me mm-hmm. is is learning to let go and let God, you know, mm-hmm. and just rely on him. So um, just – I don't know. We we've talked about anxiety. We've talked about being anxious. Yeah. Um, and, and somehow it never. I can tell myself that, mm-hmm. but then at night when I lay down and I try to go to sleep, and then I find myself staring at the ceiling. And I think a lot of people. I think a lot more people are feeling that way right now. And we're like, where you know, we 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 for you know, we we ask the question, why God? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why God? Why? Are, why are these things happening to us? And I know that you've you've talked about being in places in your life where you probably ask the same thing. Um, this morning, you discussed some things in your devotion, uh, and thank you very much for leading oh, devotion this morning thank and you. sharing a word from <laughs> God um, about some. Uh, you know, something you went along with. You know, you went through with your husband and. You know, and that that trial that you went through, and I and I think about that, and I'm thinking about, um, you know, just you know, how did you get through that? Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's a that's a great question. Uh, so the the trial that you're referring to, my husband was diagnosed with a brain tumor. It was mm-hmm. within within the first two years of our marriage, and even though he had surgery to have it removed, went through radiation, things like that, he still lives to this day mm-hmm. with a brain injury. So oh, wow. he has a vision deficit and a memory deficit and our lives have never returned to that normal that we knew for those first two years of our marriage and that's that's hard that's just hard i i wish i could sugarcoat it and say but everything is great and and we have days that we're thriving and we have days that we're limping and we're learning that you can be thriving and limping all at the same time Mm. Uh, it's more about it's not that we ever get to a place of living these independent, self-sufficient lives. It's so much. It's so much more about us realizing that our dependency on God is okay, mm-hmm. and it's okay. But what, one thing I wanted to address: you talk about anxiety. Uh, I don't, I don't want at all for anyone to hear that. Well, you, if you just have greater faith and right. just trust more, yeah, not... <laughs> the, then you'll have this right. uh, all of a sudden this epiphany and, and you won't be anxious anymore. <laughs> I, I do feel like there is a rest that comes um, when we silence the voices of the world mm-hmm. that tell us we're not good enough, that we're not doing well enough at X, Y, Z, or or that tell us if you don't have a 30-year plan, then, then you're just going to be lost. Uh, I th- I feel like that there is merit to silencing those voices and hearing the voice of God through Scripture. But I also know that some people w- are going to have a little bit more of a pro- propensity for this clinical anxiety mm-hmm. uh, that that we see a yes. lot these days. And for them, that next step and that change they might need to embrace is maybe getting help mm-hmm. that they haven't gotten before. That's mm-hmm. an enormous change. Yeah. Uh, but more than anything, what I what I would encourage that person towards, yeah, don't try to just trust God more. Like get some get some help. It's believe the change to embrace there is believing that you can get to a healthier place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, believing that uh, whether it's through counseling, medication, any of that, mm-hmm. uh, believing that uh, that God still has a good plan for you to live a, a life of joy and peace. Right. Absolutely. We, we've talked about mental health a bit before um, on the show, uh, pr- particularly about anxiety and depression. Um, and that's something that uh, members of my family have struggled with and in the, in the clinical sense, like have had to make changes in their lives to mm-hmm. to help deal with. Um, but you can even see while, while, while we, we, we tend to take those kind of things and make them mundane, yeah. like despiritualize them. Yeah. The thing is that these things are provided to you by God, you know, mm-hmm. like and and you can you can see his grace in a lifestyle change, a, you know, you know, do, you know, surrounding yourself with people who help you and like asking for help and things like that. So 
I, um, I think cautioning people from despiritualizing these things or it, or feeling guilty that if you do these things, you're not doing it the biblical way. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. You know, these things are not disobedience. Yes, trust God, but take advantage of the gifts that he's given you as well, um, especially now, you know, uh, after after a year of upheaval and still settling and, and, and finding, you know, your, your new stride. Find it in uh, find it in trust and find it in God's grace as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, so your book um, is coming out the thirteenth of this month. Yes, yes. So uh, we will uh, definitely keep an eye out for that. That is going to be. Um, we'll have a link down in the description of this episode uh, to go look for that book as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the ones who are listening on the radio, yeah. will you go ahead and let them know how they can get the book? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, I have a lot in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just, so just I, drive by Laura's house. Just come on over. So, so I'll give you one. have a stand out in front with a sign, you know, my, my kids love making <laughs> lemonade stands. Right. We're going to be selling lemonade and so long normal. Right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, anywhere you buy books, whether it's Amazon or whatever, yeah, uh, yeah you can pick it up there. And, and really, it's for anyone... Uh, that's gone through substantial change, which mm-hmm. I guess is kind of all of us. Yes. <laughs> but more than that, it's for anyone that, that wants to learn how to be free mm. of um, the anxiety and fear that comes with change mm-hmm. rather rather than, uh, you know, it's for anyone that, that wants to learn how to live a life that mm. isn't so tied to their circumstances. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But really is more grounded in, in faith in God. Wow. That's and, that, and that's a powerful thing. Very timely now. Yeah. Um, so absolutely, thank you so much for writing the book. First of all, and, uh, and for for using your gifts uh, for the glory of God and to help other Christians in yep. their walk. And if you want to re-listen to this episode yes. to get all the information, you can go to engagemagazine.net, Click the tab at the top that says radio, where you could also find our past interview with Laura. So you can go listen yes. to that. That's hey, your well, homework. Well, hold on, but I get to say something before before we're done here. Yes, sure. you do. I want to thank you guys for what <laughs> you do and the way that you encourage people. I think about especially what we've just walked through with the pandemic, people being closed up in their homes, uh, whether it's married individuals or single individuals, that were truly, I think we were all searching for hope mm. in a way that we hadn't before. And I truly believe that your message uh, was that hope for so many people. Mm. Um, when we were unable, when we were socially distancing mm-hmm. and unable to be with people, I think the two of y'all were the people that people were hanging out with. Wow. And y'all thank were providing you. that thank community. You so yeah. yeah. Thank you guys that for what you do. That means a lot. Um, thank you so much for being on with us today. Anytime. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we will definitely have you on. Write another book and we'll have you on. <laughs> <laughs> or any, any, anything at all. Um, and uh, guys, until, you, until uh, next week, continue to share truth and apply scripture.